Maricopa County, Arizona 2020 election results continues. Mike Garofalo is there. He's been there all day, even after President Biden's Department of Justice tried to stop it. Over the next few days, Mike will be reporting to us from Phoenix. He's going to give us a close-up look and talk to the people who are involved. A little later in the program, we're going to talk with former Arizona Secretary of State Ken Bennett. And tensions do remain high in Israel. We got our eyes on that after missile attacks and violent protests shook the nation yesterday and today. So why should that matter to us? In just a few minutes, we're going to talk to Victory News contributor John Graves right now. Let's go to Phoenix, Arizona, and to Mike Garofalo with today's headlines. Mike, over to you. Greg, I am in, of course, Veterans Memorial Coliseum here. The counting of the votes here in Maricopa County, the recounting is taking place right behind me. Of course, a, a huge audit. The nation's watching this. But right now, let's get to some other news before we go further into depth regarding what's happening here. The Israeli city of Tel Aviv is under fire from a barrage of as many as 130 rockets launched by Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The blast prompted officials to close both the airport and the Gaza border. And it's been reported that there are multiple casualties. The escalation was triggered by soaring tensions in Jerusalem and days of clashes at an iconic mosque in the Holy City. This round of violence, like previous ones, was fueled by Palestinian claims over Israel's long-standing ownership of Jerusalem. The U.S. has temporarily restricted government employees from personal travel as violence continues to plague the area. Now, the city is home to major holy sites of Islam, Judaism, as well as Christianity. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has accused the Hamas militant group of crossing a red line with its rocket attacks on Jerusalem and promised a tough response. <laughs> Now, he said that Monday, Israel would not tolerate an attack on our territory, on our capital, on our citizens and soldiers. He further warned that whoever attacks us will pay a heavy price. And the Israeli military said it struck a number of Hamas targets in response to continued rocket fire out of Gaza. The army said rocket launchers and eight militants had been targeted. And the State Department is condemning the rocket attacks that occurred in Israel. Here is State Department spokesperson Ned Price. Let me start by saying that the United States condemns in the strongest terms the barrage of rocket attacks fired into Israel in recent hours. This is an unacceptable escalation. While we urge de-escalation on all sides, we also recognize Israel's legitimate right to defend itself, to defend its people and its territory. Meanwhile, unrest continued in Jerusalem Monday evening after Palestinian protesters set a tree on fire or a light with fireworks at that site. Earlier, Israeli police fired stun grenades and rubber bullets, and they clashed with stone-throwing Palestinians at the compound, which is Islam's third holiest site and considered Judaism's holiest. More than 300 Palestinians, we are told, were hurt, according to the Palestinian Red Crescent. Police say 21 officers were hurt, including three who were hospitalized. Israeli paramedics and seven Israeli civilians were also injured. And lastly, the White House said Monday it is closely monitoring the violence in Israel and said President Joe Biden has serious concerns about the situation there. Press Secretary Jen Psaki said National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke over the weekend with his Israeli counterpart, and they agreed that the launching of rocket attacks and incendiary balloons from Gaza toward Israel is unacceptable and must be condemned. Greg, back to you. Thank you, Mike. I want to bring in attorney Victory News contributor John Graves. John, here we go. Kabul, Afghanistan, kids are getting blown up. Iran is harassing U.S. naval ships in the Persian Gulf with small boats. Rocket attacks in Israel, which was part of the Abraham Accords, historic peace under, uh, under President Trump. And just a little over 100 days in, here we go. We're back to talking and condemning, but not actually doing anything. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a good way to say it, Greg. It's pretty stunning if you think about it. You look at the last four years and the historic, in our entire lifetime, peace treaties that were made under President Donald Trump. And within a matter of a few short months, uh, here we go with chaos erupting. Uh, it's pretty stunning that Israel can defend itself when all the world around it wants to annihilate it. Uh, it's a great spiritual lesson. 
I mean, it, it all the way through the Bible, it's clear that little piece of ground is going to be at the forefront of the world focus forever. And so uh, it's very critical to God that we defend Israel, stand with Israel and pray for Israel. So I would say to all our listeners, be praying uh, for God to move in that in that mess over there. Absolutely right. And that is part of our covenant. The reason they're hated is because God chose them out of all the peoples yep. and made a covenant with them. And that's where they're yep. little Satan, we're great Satan to the Iranians. John. Yeah, I was there. I was literally there last year, right before they closed down everything for COVID. I, I would make an annual trip there every year. We were there in March when, when they were leaving. And I was preaching this weekend in a church over Joshua and Caleb going into the promised land. So this goes all the way back. And it's interesting. If you study world religions, we're down to the three Abrahamic Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And so pay attention to that. Watch and discern the times, but don't cease praying for the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, because it's very close to the heart of God. Yeah, and the scripture commands us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And in Hebrew, yes. it says, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. You pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and you are blessed when you That's do right. that. Uh, John, thank you so much. Tim? Greg, the 2020 election audit going on in Arizona's largest county will likely uncover some issues. That's what the Senate president said late last week. Karen Fan added that she hopes they don't find anything serious, but she does think there will be some irregularities like dead people voting or people voting that don't live there anymore. The audit of Maricopa County ballots is being done following a state Senate order. Initially, county leaders fought against subpoenas, but they finally agreed to send most of what was asked for, except the routers. The audit began on April 23rd. Democrats have tried to stop the audit at least once, claiming insufficient security at the Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum, where the audit is taking place. And that's where our own Mike Garofalo is. We'll go back to him. Mike, I understand you have a guest. Tim, I do have a guest, Kenneth Bennett here, a former Secretary of State uh, for the state of Arizona, and you're the liaison for the Senate in respect to this audit. How's it going so far, sir? It's going well. We're a little bit behind the pace that the contractor wanted to be at. Uh, we've been counting for about two and a half weeks. Why is this important? Well, I've started kind of uh, reducing this whole election to if Arizona were a thousand people back in medieval England, that was called a shire. When a thousand people live somewhere, they called it a shire, Yorkshire or Devonshire. If Arizona was a thousand people, we had about 80% of the people vote in last November's election. So that's 800. This is how close the race was. Biden got 401 votes. Trump got 399. Now that tells you that if one of those votes was incorrectly given to the one instead of the other, maybe it was a tie. So the winner and the loser probably want to know, have we checked everything that we can check to make sure we want to uh, spot check uh, some voter registration information to make sure there's not 82 people voting from a vacant lot or something. Sure. And then there's another subcontractor that you don't see that has already captured all of the information out of the Dominion machines mm -hmm. and they are back at their secure lab checking all the machines to make sure that the versions of software were correct, nothing was connected to the internet and those kinds of things. Okay, speaking of the internet, let's talk about the routers. What's the status with those? Uh, the, the county uh, inexplicably continues to deny access to the routers. Three weeks ago, one of the county assistant county attorneys told me personally that they had removed all the routers and the hubs and all of the equipment from the county building and that they would be on a pallet delivered to the auditors when we got the machines. When they didn't show up, I said, what's, what's up? He said, well, we decided not to do that. We're going to give you virtual access to the routers. And that went on for two weeks. And then a couple of days ago, they said, no, if we give you virtual access, it will compromise the social security numbers of sheriff's deputies, which are in a totally separate building. Uh, it may require uh, the Senate issuing some more subpoenas in the next day or two and having the county officials come down and explain why they suddenly can't give them access to the routers. Any so we will get the job done every last one. Gotcha. Okay, thanks, thanks so much. much. Appreciate right. the time. Okay. Greg, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you, Mike. Fascinating to hear a detail. That's the best explanation that I've heard about what's going on. Thank you so much. A farmer in Camado, Texas, to, that's located between Del Rio and Eagle Pass, came across five abandoned migrant girls on Sunday. All were under there. They are all were under the age of seven. The farmer said he stumbled upon them as he was driving across his property, which comes right up to the Rio Grande River. Here's a video that Representative Tony Gonzalez, a Republican, posted after he interviewed that farmer. 
this is the the Rio Grande Valley or the Rio Grande River. Right there is Mexico. Can you just what did you see on Sunday? It's about eight thirty in the morning. Just driving along, and all of a sudden, I see them there, right, right beside the bank here on the river. Five little baby girls, yep. all by themselves, hungry, crying. One didn't have any clothes on. Crawling, wasn't even old enough to walk. Crawling mm -hmm. around. Uh, so I immediately called the border patrol. I don't think they would have made it if I hadn't found them. Wow, that's the tragedy that's going on. It seems like we're being pressed on every side. I want to go back out to Arizona right now to Mike Garofalo. Mike. A cyber attack on a major U.S. pipeline that led to a partial shutdown has now led to gas stations running out of fuel. According to the Epic Times, some gas stations in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia were out of fuel. The station's tanks ran dry after customers rushed to fill vehicles following the hack of Colonial Pipes Pipeline. That is, the pipeline transports gasoline and other fuel through 10 states between Texas and New Jersey, delivering roughly 45 percent of fuel consumed on the East Coast. The Colonial Pipeline Company, based in Georgia, said Saturday that it was hit by a ransomware attack and halted all pipeline operations to deal with that threat. Colonial is the in the process of restarting portions of its network, and it said Sunday that its main pipeline remained offline, but that some smaller lines were operational. The company says it hopes to have the entire pipeline up and running, we were told, by the end of this week. Well, COVID-19 vaccines are kid-friendly, as the FDA expands use of Pfizer shot to children as young as 12 years of age. Now, the Food and Drug Administration declared the Pfizer vaccine is safe and offers strong protection for younger teens based on testing of more than 2,000 U.S. volunteers between the ages of 12 and 15. A study found no cases of COVID-19 among fully vaccinated adolescents and compared to 18 among kids given dummy shots. More intriguing, researchers found the kids developed higher levels of virus-fighting antibodies and then earlier studies measured in young adults. The younger teens received the same vaccine dosage as adults and had these same side effects, mostly sore arms and flu-like fever, especially after that second dose. Tim, I'm going to send it back to you. All right, Mike. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has a message for anyone who thinks about bringing violent protest to his state. One of the reasons we're here today with the bonuses is because we know just how important that is. And so I think that uh, what we did uh, plants our flag in the ground. It tells people, hey, if you're in Portland, you think you can come down to Florida and do this, stay out of our state. Uh, we don't we don't want you coming down here and causing problems. And if anyone does cause these problems, if you try to burn something down, you try to harm uh, anybody, but particularly a police officer uh, during one of these um, during one of these uh, violent assemblies, uh, there will be consequences. They will be swift and they will be severe and they will be uh, such that people who see that happening will know that's not something that we want to do going forward. Now, the governor made those strong comments last week while discussing his administration's decision to pay all police officers, firefighters, paramedics, EMTs $1,000 as a thank you for their work during the pandemic. DeSantis singled out Portland during that speech as the city has been on the epicenter for violence since Antifa and Black Lives Matter riots broke out last spring. I want to bring in John Graves. John, I want to get your comments. You haven't had a chance to comment on what we heard just a few moments ago from Arizona. What do you think about what's going on there and this whole fraud thing, which, again, the mainstream media says there is none of? Yeah, you know what, that was, I agree with Greg, that was one of the clearest explanations of what actually is happening. And it's, it's uh, to me, ironic that who is fighting the audit? Everybody should want this audit on both sides. If the left is saying it's the most secure election in history, they should want this audit to show once and for all there is none. I don't think, this is my prediction, prophecy if you want to call it, I don't think the fraud investigations are going away. I think as things are found, people are going to get a greater and greater strength, a greater and greater appetite to find this. And all anybody should want on either political extreme is the truth. We should have easy to vote, 
hard to cheat, but we should know that our votes are secure and that when we elect people who govern us, we should know they're the ones we actually elected. So it was very impressive what they're doing in Arizona. I just wish it was happening in the other seven states that were decided by that same razor thin margin. Right. Uh, when you try to silence and threaten people who investigate fraud, uh, there's probably fraud. Uh, real quickly, I want to get your thoughts about the, the little girls found there on the border. I know you wanted to say something about that as well. You know, it's to me, that's one of the saddest stories of this day. I mean, for that's what nobody wants to talk about at the border. Everybody's kind of moved on to something else. But there is sex trade that is happening that is rampant. 68, up to 68 percent of the girls and children have reported being sexually assaulted. You've got little kids being abandoned. It is a humanitarian crisis. And then a lot of them who are breaking the law are shipped and paid at taxpayer funds up to 395 a night. What's happening at the border is an absolute tragedy, and we need to do something to put pressure on our state legislatures because the federal government clearly is not going to do anything about this. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much, John. I want to go back out to uh, Arizona uh, to where the ballots are being counted. The investigation is happening. Mike has an interview there. Mike Garofalo, back to you. Greg, uh, joining me right now, John Brakey, you are an audit expert. John, tell me why is a situation like this, an audit like this, so important, and what can you give us a little perspective on it? Well, the perspective that I want to share with people is that we need to do this because there's two viruses in this country right now. One we wear a mask for and get a shot for, but there's a more dangerous virus. It's called cynicism. And cynicism is destroying our country. In North Carolina, two years ago, I gave a speech, and I predicted what was going to happen January 6th. And I knew that this was coming. I've been doing elections for 17 years. And the reality is, you know, in this country right now, the cynicism is so bad, more people are joining the Mark Twain party. You know what that party believes? They believe if elections made a difference, they wouldn't let us do it. And that is a problem. Our country only works good when we think like America that we know that the election system is real and that we got serious problems that we need to deal with. And when you get burnt on a ballot box and you walk away, you become hardened and cynical, and, and that is just going to destroy our country. Well, President Joe Biden made his national police statement, weak statement, that is, and his message at first seemed okay, but for, before it was over, it may have left a bad taste in some people's mouths. In his statement, President Biden expressed gratitude to the country's fallen police officers and stated that his administration would work to support local law enforcement through the aftermath of COVID-19. President Biden went on to say that his administration would work to make sure that police officers around the country would have the resources they need to do the job effectively. He then turned his attention to the issue of police violence, saying that there is a deep sense of distrust toward law enforcement, a distrust that has been exacerbated by the recent deaths of several black and brown people at the hands of law enforcement. Greg, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks, Mike. Stellar job there today. Thank you for what you did. I want to bring John Graves back in here. You know, when we were younger, it was say no to drugs. We were raised uh, to not allow peer pressure to make us experiment with drugs. And now we've got peer pressure from the government wanting us to take an experimental drug uh, with the vaccine. Now they want to give it to children. And uh, I wanted to get your thoughts before we went further. I think that's a good analogy. It's an experimental drug that's having a lot of side effects. When they had a vaccine like this and 50 people, I think it was during the swine flu, they shut the vaccine down. We've had over 3,000 people die from the vaccine and they're not shutting it down. They're pushing it, pushing it, and now they're trying to get it to kids as young as 12. People, we've said on this network over and over, people need to make their own decision. You need to pray to God, ask God what he wants you to do. Uh, but there really is a mistrust. Uh, I mean, you've got the president of the United States saying we mistrust police officers because of something. And you've got Barkey, which I thought was an incredible summary there that Mike did in Arizona. People mistrust the elections in this country. So trust is a massive issue. And the way that we can do that is to share the truth and let all sides be able to talk about and it. And that's what we're doing. We're going to places other networks aren't. John, uh, Mike is there exactly. and where it's happening. Yeah. Uh, you can't get cynical or hardened in this thing. Thing that stands out to me is the routers weren't there, yet they weren't supposed to be connected to the internet. Why would the machine have a router? Help me understand. 
Yeah, they shouldn't have. There should be no outside contact. I don't know if y'all have covered Anne County in Michigan. That's another story that's coming out. There's work going on in Georgia and an audit investigation in Wisconsin. We haven't seen the end of this. This is going to continue. And the truth is what everybody should be seeking on both sides. And if the truth was that Biden got 81 million votes, then everybody on the right needs to go, OK, well, that's what God did. God sets people in authority. If that's not what happened, then there's going to be a political uprising of people to try to deal with the truth and try to get this thing fixed. And the, the whole thing with me is the president, Jesus said you can't get good water and, and bad water out of the same thing. Uh, the president can't keep praising the law enforcement and then working against them at the same time. I said it this morning, uh, speaks with forked tongue. We, you can't be that. We've got we to gotta have a consistent message. 10 seconds. Yeah, and he and and think about what he said. He said there's a mistrust in police officers. Well, it's a mistrust because of the narrative of the mainstream media yeah. and the Democrat Party. Yeah. All right. I want to thank you for being with us, John Graves. You always bring great insight.